Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Concrete Pastures. I am so excited to be here today with, uh, oh my God, I am so excited to have him here today. He is no stranger to um, being an immigrant. He's no stranger to um, the life of an immigrant. I am so excited to introduce you to him. He is, he has an intensive resume, I should say, and um, he's an online host. Of, a, of the open forum program at Zambia Blog, Radio Talk. He's also an interim chairman of the newly formed Global Co-op Zambia. Please welcome my fellow Zambian and my fellow immigrant, like I said, Mr. Roger Charlie. Welcome. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, I, did I miss anything? I love your resume, by the way. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I like it, it is nice and sweet, short. Yeah, I like it, thank you. Oh my gosh, I was like, oh my goodness. All media, and I am new to all this uh, media thing, so please just bear with me and um, the community, please um, bear with me as well. But um, I'm excited to get into this conversation with you. You joining us from Alberta, Canada, that is I don't correct. know if I'm pronouncing it right, hopefully. Yeah, that's the way they say it, actually. Yeah, oh, I'll great. Yeah. <laughs> I kept practicing. I was like, is this how beta? Is this how bad? Or, you yeah. know, you know how it is. The English is different. But I wanted right. to make sure that I get it right. And um, welcome. Uh, did Thank I you, miss man. anything that you'd like to share maybe with the community that I missed on your resume? Yeah, no, I think what you mentioned... Um, Part of my, if not most of what my passion is about, it's what I do on radio. Yeah, I do. I have a job. I got to survive, but that's not where my passion is. If you know. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I've been doing my radio with my friends for the last fifteen years. A good part of my life, I've nice. been doing uh, that radio. Um, yeah. So you 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 just nailed it. I would say. Oh, listen. I, I am all for passion and doing what you love. These days, a lot of people don't love what they do. And right. having something that you're passionate about and that you love, like this is my new baby that I'm passionate about. I get like so much butterflies whenever I, I even record even my solo episodes and getting ready for an interview. I'm like nervous and so much butterflies, but I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about yeah. inspiring people. And this is why you're here today. Um, right. I know you are from Zambia, and uh, you live. In, you currently live in Canada, and I want to know. I don't know what the process is like um, when uh, when you're trying to get ready to come to Canada, for instance. What is the visa process for for that? Because I know about the U.S. Uh, process. Yeah. I came from Zambia to the U.S., uh, New York. I know about that process. How was it for you during the time? And how long have you been to in Canada, by the way? I'm sorry. Uh, I've been in Canada for the last 13 years. Oh, wow. So it's been a while. Now, when you ask about the visa process for that matter, it, uh, in our case, we were coming from the United States. Um, and I'll probably say it might not be as rough as you're asking for a visa when you're in Zambia. So we were um, applying for a visa while we were in, a, in the first world, so to say. So even the treatment, in my view, might be a little bit uh, a, a different. So I, I don't know how the visa process to come to Canada is, like you, I only know the American process because the, the, we first ah. came to uh, America. Uh, however, from America to here, um, it also, I think, depends on the type of visa you are asking for. Uh, but I know I did uh, apply for uh, a student visa. I think the treatment was the same. Uh, the second visa we applied was uh, uh, through my wife uh, coming to coming to work. 
uh, it was still the same. You went for an interview to Washington DC. Um, after that, they will say, you leave your, your passport with them. You go back, in my case, to Delaware and start waiting 14 days. Uh, mm -hmm. the, visit, the, the, the passport comes in the mail stamped with a uh, with, uh, visa. Let me say it was hard, hassleful. <laughs> no hassle at all. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love that. Oh my yeah. gosh. And, and Delaware is right there. It's not too far from Washington, D.C. Correct. Me, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's like an yeah. hour drive or so? Yeah, one hour, 30 minutes. Uh, you drive from Delaware to Washington, D.C. Uh, and I just want to let our audience know, actually, you and I are two hours different. Uh, you, we are ahead. Right. Uh, right now, it's 11.10. You are at... 9.10. 910. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful that you were able to join me because I know it's early. Um, yeah. But thank you for sharing um, that part of the visa process because for US, depending on what you're coming uh, to do in the US, for me, um, I was young. So I had to use my mom's um, bank statements and financial banking. You need some, some, some financial backing as to why you're coming to the US and how you're going to live in the U.S. if you are coming Correct. to the U.S. Yeah. And I had to use my mom um, uh, backing for that. So if you're coming, uh, please be ready to have that backing. If you're thinking of a process of going to go get the visa. And um, so it's very different with how we get to places. So at least this is, uh, this is part of the process of we got to have financial backing. Um, how difficult was it for you to um, leave the country? I know we are, I left my mom, my sisters. I, I literally got on the plane with my mom's cousin when I was coming here, and I was crying my way out all the way to New York. How difficult was it for you to leave <laughs> everything? <laughs> I, 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 like you said, you, probably you were young, and mm -hmm. your attachments to your um mom was still oh. like strong 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 uh i was uh, old enough my wife uh, the son who was um four months seven months Ooh. somewhere there he was less than one, one year when he basically left. born here <laughs> basically born here yeah basically born here uh it, it, it wasn't hard i mean, I mean for grown-ups especially at our time, I think 1998, when I left Zambia, oh, wow. um, the country had gone under some economic hardship. Um, the, the mines were, were, were closing. Um, uh, Anglo-American was, uh, was just leaving. So a lot of opportunities were disappearing. As you know, Zambia is dependent on the mines, uh, especially for some of us who come from uh, the copper belt. Yes. So a lot of opportunities were uh, disappearing and uh, you, you had to have plan B uh, and you, are, you had to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. I see, I, I come, I'm not going to see my family suffer. So I'll do everything I can do uh, to take them to a, a safer place. So it was not um, any difficult. I'll be, I'll, I'll be lying. Uh, leaving the United States, however, ca coming here, uh, was back to Zambia. Zambia is like, they say, a third world country. So you are coming to a first world country, United States of America, for that matter. Yeah. So there is so much excitement. Now, leaving the U.S. to come to Canada was another thing. I'm not coming to from the first world to another first world. So, so there, I think we had uh, a little bit of uh, reservations, but uh, the opportunities which uh, I, I think were be, uh, uh, before us were more more promising. So we we, we were hesitant uh, coming to the to, to the US uh, to to Canada. Um, some people were crying. I was not crying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my, you. <laughs> uh, my son had um, was having a good time uh, in his football, uh, uh, a young football career. In, oh in, in wow! Delaware. Yeah. So you took Delaware. that away from him? 
of course, but over here, I think it, it, it just worked out just fine. Yeah. yeah. So uh, very difficult, no, not even Canada, but uh, from, the, from Zambia, it was exciting uh, to come. It wasn't difficult at all. So for you, it's interesting. And um, you came to the US first and then you're now in Canada. Was it easier to adjust? How was it for you? Was it easier to adjust in the US or was it easier also to adjust in Canada? Like adjusting to the life because you already lived yeah. in the US yeah, and yeah. Then going to Canada, yeah. was it easy? So US was, I, I wouldn't say it was, it was tough. Let, let me not lie, uh, adjusting because it was our first time in the United States. And then you are given a social security card, which says not authorized for work. <laughs> so you can't work. Number two, <laughs> you, you had told the story at the embassy that, oh, you have all this money, you're going to survive. But you don't have any money. Uh, that is for, for sure. So adjusting was uh, was uh, a, a little bit hard, and you needed to be in school, or else you are going to be out of state, out of state. Yeah. Um. So, but some of the people, um, you know, the the, uh, the usual African story. Sometimes it works to our disadvantage. Sometimes it works to our advantage. What do I mean? Um. Most people think, oh, you're coming from Africa, you are poor, blah, 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 you don't have money. Mm -hmm. So we go to this uh, realtor, we told them we are looking for an apartment. Uh, we don't have money, by the way. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are waiting for money to come from Africa. Yeah. And, and then she, she, she's like, ah, oh, I know it's very tough. Up, up there to have money, it's okay. When, whenever they were very good people uh, in, in the United States, oh, wow. they, they gave us somewhere to live without paying them a dime. Okay, so, I yeah. should have known you before I came here <laughs> because I, I, know, needed, I, I need a free place to live. Oh my yeah, god, so we, we, we went there, we, we sat, uh, we had to plan. I went to McDonald's. Uh, like everybody else, that's where your first job was supposed to be, it's like this. Uh, then I have your social security number. I hand him over and it says not authorized for work. He says, it's okay. Well, I'm like, oh, wow. You know? And yeah, I, I worked there and Lord and behold, I had my rental money to pay. I went to our landlord, I've got a job. In two weeks time, I get paid. I'm bringing uh, the check. Oh yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Um, our church was very helpful uh, in Delaware. Um, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, the, the church would give us a lot of food. The, you know, they the, the bring a lot of food. Uh, my wife, uh, they gave her a job at the center, at, 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 the, at, at the church. So that was, uh, uh, that also helped out. I remember one winter time, we ran out of cash and we had no power in the house oh, because wow. our bill was over to for electricity. Um, I remember it was, it was tough, but we found another Zambian who was a professor at the University of Delaware. Uh, he helped us pay the bill for, all these were a part of, I think the, the settling process, especially if you, you don't know anyone, uh, uh, you don't know anyone in the in the in the in, in the area. But as as we went, America being America, I, I remember listening to one of the senators says America is the only country in the world where you come where you come with zero money in your pocket and you are still able to to make it. Yeah. So the set, yeah. So the settling was was tough, but over the years, I think we settled, uh, you move from one job to another. I found a job which could even pay my tuition fees. So that was good. Uh, my wife they went into nursing, she completed. Uh, the rest is uh, history, as they say. What were you studying? I'm curious. Uh, I was 
Oh, I studied a lot of things. I think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> America. That's America first, for you. <laughs> yeah, I know. First, I started with the accounting. Um, it started to be boring. I, because when we come from, I think, Zambia, we have very uh, limited choices. Yeah. So when I was coming, it was OSCA, AAT, stuff like that. Yes. You know, so we come, but then you come to America, boom, you have all these opportunities inside you. Oh, yep. yeah, there's programming, there is this. So I get excited. I, I try accounting, it was boring. I start to do programming. But uh, finally, I went back to, I think, what I really loved, which is uh, uh, a business. I did business management at uh, uh, Wilmington, Wilmington University. That's where I graduated. Very nice. Um, I mean, when we come just um, here or we go anywhere in the world, any country that's not your home, we've all faced different challenges. Correct. And um, talking about McDonald's, I worked at McDonald's. My first job was being a babysitter and a nanny. That was the most excruciating job I ever had. I, <laughs> I never had a job in my life. Yeah. And to, become, yeah. to come here, my first job was taking care of five kids and cleaning a mm. mansion. Uh, the same mansions like you see on TV, it was humongous. I would clean mm. that every single day. And then from that, I, I now got my, uh, my social security to work my work permit to work and it was a little bit uh i felt lost a little bit yeah and yeah. as to where i'm going to start from and mcdonald's was my first job of real job of <laughs> being in the working world other than from being a babysitter uh yeah. but it for me i don't know it didn't pay too much and living in new york is very expensive oh yeah yeah and yeah. Paying rent, thank God I was living with my mom's sister and then my mom's cousin. So the rent was split in three ways. Everything was split three ways. So I managed, but still, I was just like, okay, I had, when we come here, we come with people on our shoulders, not physically, but we come with them with us. We have 100, that responsibility. 100%. Yeah. We come with that responsibility. I was, for me, it was taking care of my grandmother on my dad's side my brothers on my dad's side and I was like okay how am I going to help them with that how am I going to manage with that because at mm. the end of the day I think I was getting like 200 hours a week or something like that mm. and the rent was way up I, yeah 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 <laughs> and by the time I, I I paid everything it was I remained with nothing I was like okay uh this is not working out no. Uh, we all, uh, our challenges are, oh my God, they make us who we are actually today. And when we look back, like we're looking back right now, it, you know, we can laugh about it, but when we're yeah. going through it, oh, it's yeah. like, oh my it's, God. <laughs> it's, um, I, at one point it was uh, making me think, was this the right decision I made to come here? Mm -hmm. uh, because it was, uh, it was quite tough. I, I had it's to be heavy. Through. It becomes very yeah. heavy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had a seven month uh, old baby. Oh my God. Uh, he, he had to have uh, diapers. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is not a uh, Zambia where you do Matevera <laughs> and you put them on the line. You wash of them. Of course. No. Yeah. 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 So you needed that money. Uh, oh for, my for God. That. So it, it, it gave me some second thoughts. Uh, but we hung in there. We, we, we hung in there. So you already answered part of my question of what you were doing before you came to the U.S. Um, so you you are living in Dola, Copper Belt. In Kitwe. Oh, I Kitwe, Copper Belt. A pure, I'm a pure copper like, uh, person. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but um, you were. What were you doing before that? I know you mentioned a little bit. In Zambia. Yeah. So in Zambia, I was working for a subsidiary of the mines, Mulungushi Investments, oh, nice. Changa, Farm, Changa Farms Division. Uh, we had uh, farms, uh, mining, ma, 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 mine farms. I was an accountant there. Uh, I was uh, the farm, farm shop uh, accountant. Um, oh, this is uh, where the accounting came in when you came here. <laughs> yes, actually, ah. yeah, yes. That, that's nice. where the uh, accounting uh, uh, came from. Uh, thinking, oh, let me just upgrade what I was there. It was very different from 
what we were doing in, in, in Zambia. No, of uh, course, the, it's day and yeah, night. Yeah. It's day and yeah, night. So I had I to was, start uh, over when I came here. Completely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was uh, working at, uh, at Papi. I, I don't know how well you know, you know Kitwe. Mm -mm. Uh, I don't oh, know. You, you have, you have I, I'm a Mongo girl, so oh, I, okay. <laughs> I lived in Mongo most of my life, and then I came yeah. to Lusaka. I, Lusaka, I didn't even experience it that much, because I, I most of the time I was in boarding school. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's what I, I was doing. It was exciting then, uh, being in the, in the farms. Mm -hmm. uh, you were guaranteed at least you had food all the time. So even if the, the paycheck was not that much, at least food, you had food, guaranteed. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. No, it, it's sad, like, what uh, what happens in our country with uh, the pay and they're not, pay people go to work. It is very, very sad. And the, you don't get it, uh, you don't get your paycheck at the end of the month, and which is monthly, it's not even like bi weekly here, bi weekly, or weekly or nothing. No. Yeah. It's just you yeah. wait to the end of the month, the government is not paying you, which is really, really sad for anybody with a family. And yeah. coming here gives you at least an, a, a lot of opportunities, like we are saying. Mm -hmm. Um, to if you don't have that stable job, uh, it gives you that, that you know so many opportunities to be able to venture and try out things that you going to like, like Mr. Right. Charlie did actually. Um, during the difficult times, I know you had your church. Did you have any difficult time when you migrated to um, Canada, when you, uh, to adjust or anything? No. Um, anyway, first talking about adjustment, especially the, the, the US, uh, uh, Thank God we uh, Zambians come from English speaking country. Yes. But you come to America, you find they have all these different phrases which you had to adjust to. I think our first, first time of uh, <laughs> facing such, such a scenario was going in McDonald's and uh, asking for chips. And uh, chips, the girl was looking at me, what was I talking about? Uh, uh, well, I meant fries. Oh, okay. Then she, I had to point at them. I had to point at them. Like, oh, I need, I, I need those. So, the the adjustment is 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 not. Um, you know, when we talk about language, it, it is not just about knowing they are coming. This and there is a meaning sometimes of say what's up. Yeah. Someone, I'm, I'm coming from McDonald's, I'm going home on foot, midnight, and all of a sudden this guy at night, he says, what's up? So I'm there looking in the sky to, 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 to check what's up. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, ah, ah, yeah, look, nah, nah, nothing, <laughs> you know? I walk away, but he scared me a little oh bit. God, have been dying. Yeah. I know, it, it came from nowhere. So <laughs> part of the adjustment, I think when we tell people about um, <laughs> migrating is paying attention to the language itself. It, it, it helps to understand. But uh, like unlike our friends who come say, from Mexico, who completely have no, no English, we know they had time. So we we come at an advantage. Our adjusting is uh, is not very other than the um, the financial adjustment, language and everything. I think we have a much easier time uh, in uh, in adjusting. I can definitely relate to that completely because um, being in New York, I went to the Bronx, but that was so funny. What's up? <laughs> that is so funny uh but yes adjusting to the uh the american english for me was a little bit but i can't compare it to somebody who doesn't speak english at all at least i understand it i can verbalize it last week i actually had a um an interview with my pastor he's from congo zai they speak french mm. you know that mm. so mm. when he came here he didn't speak a word of english right so he's he talks about the challenges that he had, like he, he knows something, but he was not able to articulate it. And same thing for, for me and you, it's very different the type of adjusting. It's just, someone says the pot, 
we uh, here we say port they say pot they say uh water uh and just the pronunciation of things yeah and yeah. for me my first experience actually was the lady wanted um my employer that i used to babysit for she asked um can you please pass me napkins in my head napkins it was the stuff that you put on the kids so i'm looking around yes. i'm like this baby does not wear napkins yeah. Now I'm looking around the room. If she did not point, I would have been so lost because she's yeah. pointing at napkins for, for me, for her to wipe her mouth and stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, oh my God, where, what's she talking about? And I start yeah. to panic, but it was just those little things also. They, yeah. they demoralize you a little bit. And they, they, do. they do. They demoralize they do. you a little bit. And to adjust to that too, I'm just like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I speak yeah. English, but it sounds very different from what it they are. Very, 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 very different. It, yes. It, 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 it is uh, understanding the, the nuance in what something uh, is, is, is spoken. Yes. Uh, it, 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 it may be there or done, but they probably they, they use it in a very different context. Yes, from, for sure. From what we are used to. Now, mm -hmm. fast forward, coming to Canada. Yeah, it was. Uh, it is more of uh, Canada is very very similar to the United States when it comes to language. Yes, they have their own. Every region you go to, even in United States, yeah, you go to the course. southern states, you are going to find people use certain phrases in in certain way. But in most cases, um, Canada, uh, Walmart is here, so you know uh, what to look for. If you want something, you go to go to Walmart. Yeah. Uh, Costco, Costco is here. If you know whatever you want, so the adjustment coming from United States over here was not as uh, uh, I wouldn't say traumatic when I came to, to Zambia, but it was much 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 easier um, on the financial front. A, it was a sponsored. Uh, a, a sponsored migration, I would say. My wife got a job with uh, uh, Alberta Health, which oh, is nice. uh, a health institution. So they paid for everything. We, oh, wow. Thank God. Our, our air tickets, they, they, they paid for us. Uh, the, the motel where we lived for one month, they were paying for us wow. until, until we, we, she started uh, uh, to work. So you can tell from Zambia to America, it was a whole different nightmare. <laughs> from here, when we didn't need a lot of support, we did need support, yeah. but I think we didn't need as much because we had already saved up. Yes, we saved up some money, but it was all it was all paid for. Uh, so oh. it was very very easy. Uh, the food was the same. I remember my son when he came. Uh, to to America in Zambia, he used to to eat this baby food. Yes. Uh, from Shoprite. Yes. Uh, our our food, I think that food comes. Is that, comes is that the one? No, you, you know the baby food, the, the, in in the bottle. Oh, in no. the jars, yes. yes yeah, yes. that's yes. a little bottle. Yeah, it comes okay. from uh, South Africa. Yes, South Africa. Yeah. So I think the taste was uh, very different from the American food. Oh he yeah. Could not he could not eat it. Mm -hmm. So we had a dilemma. Our son would not eat the American, uh, those. Uh, uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, he couldn't eat it at all. No matter what we what, what we did, but he loved it when we was uh, in Zambia. So we we had to depend on uh, mom's uh, mom's milk uh, as we figured it out. Uh, what what else he could what else he could eat? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Uh, coming here, the food was the same. I would say. So even for ourselves, um, the, the only adjustment is in, in Zambia, people, before they even test the food, they put salt before yes. they even test the food. Yeah. Yes. Um, we had to reduce a lot of salt. So even here, I think when you eat, it, it was uh, becoming normal. Yeah. Uh -huh. So America to Canada was much smoother than Zambia to the United States. But it is that um, a promise of America which keeps you going every day. 
But once you leave it, sometimes you ask questions. Whether, ah, I don't know about this place. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. we've all been there. I had a, a lot of moments where I was questioning my decision. And or, when I would be questioning my decision, my mom would be, I don't know, almost at the same time, she'll be calling to check on me. And she'll be like, remember, you actually have a return ticket. You can always come home. But yeah. for me, returning home was not an option because it's a decision that I made. And I felt like I was failing myself. And I think that's, all, mm. that's what all of us go through. It's like, we don't have an option. This is what we decided to do. And we don't want to fail our people that we come with on our shoulders. And Correct. ourselves, really. But for me, it was yeah. like, I need to make myself, I, I need to make something out of myself. My mom was a very successful businesswoman at the time. She was traveling everywhere. Um, mm. She was going to Dubai even when before I knew what Dubai was. And <laughs> yes, I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I could have easily just stayed with my mother and be under her yeah. wing. Uh, help her run her business in, in that aspect. But I wanted to mm. become my own my own person, yeah. my own identity, aside from just being with my mom. And every time she called, I was just like, ah, uh, mm. no, everything is great. It's great. Because she gave me $200 to survive on. For It's like, here you go. This is $200. That's what, and it was, it took me a month to get a job. Thank God at that time in 2002, I was able to survive on $200. And luckily, I got a job um, a almost a month after being here. But um, yeah, our challenges. Uh, <laughs> do you regret anything? Do you regret coming to the US? Do you regret being in Canada at this point in your life? I miss home. That is uh, for sure. Regret? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be telling a, a lie that uh, I, I regret. Uh, having made uh, the, the, the move. Um, like you have rightly said, when, when we come here, how, how many people are we carrying on our, on our shoulders? So if we say we regret coming here, uh, probably we are forgetting how many people we have helped to go to school, how many people we, we, we are helping uh, go to um, good healthcare. So uh, I, I don't think any immigrant, and unless you left something uh, back home, which was much yeah. more than, than you have here. But coming here, I think has been uh, an opportunity for a lot of us. Well said, well said, for sure. Um, <clears throat> you Do you still have family back home? Or have you been back home since being here? I have a lot of family back home. Um, I have four sisters, one brother. Oh wow! And Big family. <laughs> and if, uh, a lot of nephews. Uh, when my mom died, I think it was uh, 2004. When she died, the announcement was made that she had uh, it seven kids. Uh, I don't know about the grandchildren, and then the grand grandchildren altogether was 97. Uh, oh that was uh, from mom, uh, from my mom's uh, line. So oh, wow. there is a lot of um, my people uh, back home. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sorry about your mom. Um, but have you been? Well, she lived a, 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 a life uh, beyond. Uh, I think she died when she was 94. Something like that. Wow. So she did. She, she yeah, um, she did a, a life. We wouldn't. Uh, that's um, a blessed life. Ninety four. It it's a blessed is. life because she yeah, got to see she, all her kids and her grandkids. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, yeah. that's beautiful. That's a blessed. And 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 I'm the the, the, the last born. I always uh, talk to her. On oh, the, you're the baby. Yes, it was uh, <laughs> very special. I attribute actually some of my little success to how uh, the love I received from, from my mom. No, I've, listen, talking about mothers, this is the reason why I'm doing this. Uh, my mom took us from uh, really nothing to being here where I am today. And yeah. I, this I contribute to her because I want her to see, like, look at what you did. 
Yeah, correct. And it's her love and her contribution and me, her just cheering me on and you can do it. Yeah, you can go yeah. on, do it. And being yeah. a single mother, it's a lot to do. Yeah. Um, and and I, you like, you, you asked if I go home. Yeah. I mm -hmm. used to go home like every, every year, uh -huh. but then COVID came. So my last journey to, to Zambia was uh, 2019. That's when COVID, COVID started. So I haven't been to Zambia the past three years. This year, uh -huh. I told people COVID or no COVID, I'm going to Zambia. Yeah. Omicron or no nothing, I am going to Zambia. We, we, we are done. <laughs> we are done no for sure for sure oh I, I was thinking also and contemplating of going um my kids have never seen my mom you know the life of immigrants i've never met my mom and i yeah. would thank god for technology they get to see her on whatsapp and um, yeah. whatever videos that we we do with her but um how is the process because i know when i first went back home in 2012 it was a old, like I it took one year for me to plan going to Zambia. How is it for you um, going home? Um, I just pack and go. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, well, you you start usually uh, one year. I'm sure one year in advance. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that you you. One of, uh, when I was in the U.S., my status would not allow me to go anyhow. Uh, I think at one point, my visa had expired. Um, and that is actually another life of a migrant. We need to talk about how to make sure you stay in status. But yeah. we had no one to advise us. We were just scared to go to immigration. I go to immigration, they'll tell me to go back home. But that's not uh, really what, 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 uh, what it is. So we had lived in the United States for 12 years, never went to, to Zambia because mm. uh, of immigration immigration uh, status. I first went to, uh, to Zambia when I came to, to Canada because here we, we had all the right papers. So that build up time, the expectation back home of mm -hmm. what you're going to take back home. Uh, kills you. So the, the, buying the air ticket is not uh, the, the, the hard part. No. It, it is you going to fulfill that expectation. That, that, that was uh, the, the hard, 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 hard feeling. Um, it, it, I remember telling my sisters, I don't have a lot of money, even when I'm, com when I'm coming. Uh, I'm just happy to come and come and see you. So please do not expect much. Yeah. You no, know, everyone had the list of stuff they wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was. Um, but after you go there, I, I think everyone after ten years, twelve years, they want to see you. The following trips you make, uh, you can just call them. I'm, I'm here. I'm only here for two weeks. I don't think I'll make it to the copper belt. Um, if there is something you need to share with them, you, you share with, with them. It yeah. is much, yeah, it is much, much, much easier. Uh, much easier. Yeah. So, but what I say is prepare when you're going to Zambia. Um, money flies when, 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 you're, when you're in Zambia. Like, literally fly. I, I used to spend, one of the times when I go to Zambia, you, you spend like $100 a day. Hundred equivalent to about hundred dollars minimum, uh, you're spending mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. I don't spend that kind of money even per week here. Yeah, you know when we, we when we buy our food, we buy everything is is in the fridge. That's it. Until the next paycheck, or maybe gas. Even gas, when I get paid, you fill up the tank until the next uh, paycheck. No, yeah. when you're in Zambia, the demand for money, not only from people, I don't know what it is. So prepare well when you are when, when you are when you are planning to go to, to Zambia. Uh, man, money can be, and there is nothing else with being so bad as being broke when you're in Zambia. You come from America. Mm -mm. <laughs> it, mm -mm. it can be excruciating. 
it can be excruciating figure. Listen, I can definitely uh, relate to preparing mm -hmm. the anticipation of when I was going, I was taking my then husband to meet my family. Yeah. It, it, like the, the whole plane, I was just like, oh my God, I was so agitated. We took uh, South African Airways where they were like, um, they give you alcohol, they give you, like they treat you well in the plane. But still, I'm just like nervous. I'm like, I haven't been there. I haven't seen my friends. I haven't seen um, anybody in a long time, my sisters. And when getting there, the same thing, spending a hundred dollars per day, it's it, it's a lot of money in it, um, is. it, it is a lot of money. It people is. expect yeah. a lot of you, which I think I want to have people like our loved ones back home. They they need to be able to understand where we're coming from. It takes a long time to be able to establish yourself. And for us to make those trips and I mean, I took suitcases, the same thing. People had lists of what they wanted. Like my sisters, my sisters were very simple. Just get me powder for my face, blah, blah, blah. But still, you feel um, an obligation. Oh, yeah, obligated, yeah. To get some, something more. They haven't seen me in so many years. And uh, going back home, I w for me, I might ask you just like, give your people wherever they are in the world when they are coming home for the first time or second time or whenever they are coming to visit enjoy them enjoy them instead enjoy of them. Just be happy. Exactly. what they are bringing to, uh, exactly. for you because it takes so long to exactly. be successful as an immigrant anywhere mm. Because yeah. first of all, you have to adjust to everything else and being able to get that good job. Uh, for some of us that went to school, it took me a long time. I had to do high school over and then I did college and then I was doing college and going to work. And like you, I was doing nursing before and then I was like, you know what, forget this. Uh, let me just continue with what I'm doing. So I was yeah. like, I'll, I'll be in financing and just continue with that. And thank God I've been very successful in it. But it doesn't mean I don't have my own responsibilities. Mm, so right, if I if right. I go home or if you see us as we come home, just be happy that we happy we that we showed here. up yeah. and yeah. celebrate us and you know yeah. uh, let's enjoy each other in that uh, in that way instead of expecting so much because the pressure yeah. is already mm -hmm. on us. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, what am I giving my my family? And sometimes we go through things. Our challenges are even bigger when you are by yourself, uh, a lot of us are by ourselves. And when you're by yourself, you don't have that community, that support to support you when you're going through things or challenges financially or whatever it is. So when we go home, maybe that's what we're all just looking for. Just that support and that's, that's all. That's all, just to go yeah. and have fun. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Would you say you found your concrete pastures at this point in your life? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> no. no. My, Could you elaborate my, 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 a little bit? My, my, yeah, yeah. My my concrete passion, I will tell you, is uh, uh, still remains uh, Zambia. So, uh, uh, coming to uh, America, coming to uh, Canada, has not changed. Mm. Uh, my concrete passion, uh, that is uh, Zambia to see a better Zambia. However, um, being here has given us a lot of uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would think of coming to Canada or coming here only in financial terms. Yes, uh, even in financial terms, I, 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 I think it has given us an edge. And uh, if you use it well, and uh, yeah, you 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 found your your passion. But knowledge, being in the United States, being in Canada, without even going to school, it is a school by itself. I agree. To, yes, to see uh, uh, how people uh, uh, do things. Uh, uh, still, there is what we call, is it African time or Zambian time? <laughs> if there is anything like that in the world called Zambian, Zambian time. And then you see how much people here respect 
their time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much so that your job and my job in our time to school, we were always on time. Yeah. But wh- wh- what is it that when the way they do their, their politics has been uh, that knowledge of looking at the way uh, politics evolves. I am one guy who hates uh, central government. Yesterday I was telling my wife how um, in in America it's it's even a little bit different. In Canada, when it comes to a decentralized government, it's Mm -hmm. even worse. Uh, You hear about Washington, D.C., the senators, the Congress, a lot in the mm-hmm. United States. Mm-hmm. Over here, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. You hear very, very little about uh, the capital. Very, very little. Or wow. about the prime minister, for that matter. Wow. wow, in America, the president of the United States yep. is the highest office in the land, blah, 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 whatever. Every day we hear about it. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is a different. But I, 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 I've seen what, what it does when people are free from uh, what I call a Lusaka syndrome. Uh, everything in Zambia is Lusaka. Lusaka, Lusaka, Lusaka. And you can see it in the lifestyle. It's yes. not very different from where we are coming from. Mm-hmm. And then you walk away just a little bit away from Lusaka into Kafiwe, you are in a different country. Yep. Over here, however, even small town I live in uh, uh, called Okotox, it has about 30,000 uh, people. It's a small town, independent f- even from the province. They run their own affairs. Mm. 30,000 people, they, they have, I would probably say, I've, I've told people, 10 banks, 10 feeding stations, if, you know, if, if not more, everything, you know. Back home, a town of 100,000, which is Lundazi uh, in the eastern province, has no bank. Have you found your passion? That was a concrete passion? No, I I, I would want to see what I've seen here. Uh, Maybe I can take that knowledge uh, back home. Uh, Part of what I've found, again, the the access to knowledge, which I want to speak to, to a lot of our people who are are going to be listening to this. We have um, access to internet 24 seven, if you are not working. When I come from work, my wife complains. All you do is come upstairs <laughs> on your co- on your computer. Um, the information nowadays, Nancy, is on our fingertips. The access to to information, be in Zambia, being everywhere, we, we've got so. Have you found your passion in here? No, the Zambia, but I have found a lot of things which can help me help our people to transform to transform my country. And I think about that every, every day. That is what, uh, if that means what I found my passion, maybe uh, I'll, I'll probably say uh, it has given us the resources, uh, it has given us the knowledge, uh, the access to, uh, to finance, uh, access to, you know, medical, medical health, Mm-hmm. Uh, all, all, all those things it, 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 it has uh, uh, given us. Yeah. Uh, having said that, even if it has given me all these things, Zambia will always be my passion. <laughs> Listen, well said. Um, everybody's <laughs> yeah. uh, concrete pastures is different. Correct. And um, for some people, like you said, it's just being able to have medical uh Correct. That, that medical insurance, uh, yeah. being able to go home, like in your case, maybe one day when you retire, you want to go home and yeah. bring some of the knowledge that you've learned in the U.S., in Canada, and bring that to the villages uh, mm-hmm. that we have in, in our country. Because yeah. you, you're right. When you are in Lusaka, it's very different. When I, when I would go visit my grandmother in Mongo. Mongo is a whole different town, operates differently. And I mean, I remember we only had like one bank, Standard Chartered. That was it. Yeah. The whole town um, uh, at that time. But I don't know how, uh, what other banks they have right now. 
Mm. And I remember when I was living there, when I was young, it's time to go to school, you buy new shoes. Of course, we're growing kids. We only had one store, the Bata store. The, yeah, uh, correct. One store. And that's why we would go buy our school shoes. Uh, and then forget about school uniforms. Forget about it. And part of the reason why I've actually created this platform is to be able to give back to those type of areas where they, some places that don't even have a roof on the or on the schools yeah and during rainy season they don't have uh, they, don't, they can't go to school correct kids can't go to correct. school because there's no correct. roof it's it, when it rains it pours in our country like it's a lot of rain correct, correct. so the school closes up until uh summer and how will people get their education and we are here so the resources that we are learning the resources that we have, the knowledge that we have, it's not always about the money. Me and you have spoken about this actually. Um, and I spoke to one of my good friends who he was actually in Russia. He went to school in Russia and now he's back home. He actually goes in depth of, you know, it's not always about the money that we think of uh, money, money. Uh, but when we go back home, Whenever we decide to retire, it's also the knowledge that we'll be able to learn. We've been yes, exposed to so yeah. much. So much, yeah. We, and that exposure, we can bring that to our country and be able to build our country in a way that we want to yeah. see it. Yeah. The way we want our kids to, to be able to see it in the years yeah. to come, mm -hmm. our grandkids, uh, whoever. And if you're listening to this, wherever you are in the world, uh, if you have resources, you have the knowledge, and you're thinking and hoping of one day retiring and going home and contemplating, it's not always just about the money that you have. Your knowledge that you have is enough. Zambia right now is a canvas, it's a blank canvas. You can bring whatever you have, whether it's a restaurant that's incredible that you like, you could take it there. I mean, we have South African restaurants most of the time uh, right. in Zambia. We have Nando's, we have all of those um, South Africans. They're able to bring their stuff from South Africa to our yeah. country. Why can't yeah. we bring America or Canada right. or Australia or London to um, to Zambia as well? Because every yeah. country provides something different. Correct. Correct. Well, I can talk to you for <laughs> the whole hours day. and hours. <laughs> the whole day. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I'm so grateful for you, like you inspiring me and you inspiring the community. I am so glad that you decided to join and support the community. Um, so some of my last questions to you. What are some of the stereotypes that you've experienced? Like for me, it was, um, this was when I first came here. They used to ask me, uh, what do you see when you open your window, outside your window? What do you see? <laughs> <laughs> did you experience some of those uh, stereotypes of being African and you know when you tell them you're from uh, Zambia my my first time not to, uh, to move out <laughs> of uh, Zambia to go abroad I went to UK ah uh, I, I spent one year I, I went to school in, in United uh, Kingdom so in this uh, church I used to attend, there was a guy called Ramsey. Um, I hope he's there. I will send my pastor a note. Is Ramsey still around? <laughs> <laughs> so Hello, Ramsey. We, we're sending you love from the yeah, US Yeah, I know. Canada. So Ramsey comes to me on Sunday morning. And the, coming from Zambia, Kitwes and Margaret, the youths there will tell you, we were very smart all the time, Thai. You know, at St. Margaret, we used to look very smart. So I go to church in uh, United Kingdom with my tie, blah, blah, blah. Then Ramsey comes to me and he say, oh, man, you look so smart. Uh, do people wear ties in Zambia? So I'm like, <laughs> Ramsey, we, we are in church. Don't, don't let me touch you. <laughs> don't let me touch you. But... Uh, <laughs> Ramsey, Ramsey. Oh, oh my pe cheeks hurt. People, yeah, people wear ties, Ramsey, in, in Africa. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So Ramsey, Ramsey goes away. Ramsey comes back the next Sunday. 
<laughs> so in Zambia, do people just drive Land Rovers? It, 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 it's just uh, mountains. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> those are some of the things I remember uh, 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 coming uh, here. It was not, I can't remember. Uh, I, 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 think, I, I think it was, uh, it was there. Um, but I can't, I can't remember a situation in the, in the, in the US other than uh, the, the story I told you about our landlord who thought we were coming from a very poor place and therefore we can't afford rent and therefore we deserve Listen, it worked in your favor. <laughs> it did. <laughs> It did. And we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's tough. For real. It, it, it's tough. But probably not the way they, uh, they, they see it. Thank you for the internet. I think it is opening up um, people's uh, minds now. Yes. They see, they think you come out, you, you find a lion outside. Yeah, that uh, was the main question they asked me. It's like, oh, what do you see outside the window? So I was like, I see the world. She, the person looks <laughs> yeah. so shocked. Yeah, like, I've seen another house. And, and I had to elaborate. Yeah. I'm like, yes, we are, I live in a war fence around my yeah. my house. It's like, in a yeah. war fence? You don't see animals? Yeah. I'm like, no, because of no. what they see on TV. Because of what? what, what uh, some of what they see on TV. What they see on TV, Nancy, and probably what we sell ourselves. Yes. When, when, when we hear uh, uh, Zambia talk about tourism, we only talk about animals most of uh -huh. the time. Yeah. But there is more to tourism than just animals. Uh -huh. You know, when I say I'm going to um, either New York, I'm going to experience those uh, big buses, the food, the dances, people in the street. There's some. Yeah. So those are, are part of tourism. Yeah. So let's bring those images of Africa. Other than just the animals. Yeah, no, it's um <laughs> I, I wanted just to laugh. I wanted the audience to laugh because <laughs> I'm sure wherever they are in the world listening to us, they also have experienced their own stereotype. Because I don't yeah. know what it's like to be in Australia and being a Zambian there. And um being here, I mean, people still get shocked that I speak English. Like it's, exactly. they, they compliment me and say, oh my God, you speak very good English. In my case, I'm like, I don't know if I speak good English, but I, I can understand it. I can, I, I can communicate. I yeah. can communicate. But, yeah. um, but they're like, you're from Zambia? I'm like, yes, you speak English? Mm. I even stopped explaining that this is our official language, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. just stopped. I was like, okay, you know, I'll just take the compliment and keep it moving. I um, mean, it is uh, just the same stereotype what we think of America when we are in, in Zambia. We oh, think yes. The entire America is, is Hollywood. Yes. And then when you come to America, you don't have money to pay for this, money to pay for. Oh, I thought there's money everywhere, you know? That is. I don't know if it's a bad stereotype. It is a stereotype. Because it is. In it, it, it is a stereotype. It, it is a yeah. stereotype because a lot of us, um, people still think, I don't know, uh, at least when I was still new here, 2002, it's like you come at the airport, there's a tree of money that you can just grab from uh, that tree of money. There's no trees. Yeah. And Hollywood does an amazing job selling it to us. I even speak about it in Correct. the first uh, episode as a solo uh, episode. Uh, I bought in into coming to America because of that. Yeah. Whatever I was yeah. seeing on TV, they were showing Times Square. Times Square is amazing. Is. You go there at night, it's fabulous. Yeah. And New York, I mean, what's nice to like? Your favorite stars live yeah. here. The 1% live here. So. Yeah, <laughs> Wall Street. <laughs> yes, there's yeah. so much that yes, whatever they they show us, it, it is somewhat true. But the reality yeah. of being an immigrant is very yeah. challenging to be able to make it. Uh, you can make it, but it's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work. Um, so if someone is thinking and contemplating of moving either to the U.S or to Canada, uh, Alberta, what advice would you give them? Uh, what should they be prepared for? Um, 
when they're thinking of coming, dreaming, wherever they are in the world? Well, that's a good question. Um, especially if you are moving from Zambia for the first time. Uh, ex if you have, uh, say, relatives where, who are going to welcome you, uh, it is uh, going to be a little bit much easier. But for you to make it, expect to work hard. You don't come to America thinking it is the same life as in Zambia, where you can make it, even if you just come from your house, seated outside, you are going to have food to, food to eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here, you gave an example, everything in your house was divided in three. Yes. You are expected to contribute 100%. Yeah. You are expected. So expect, if you can find a job and some of the job, expect to work to do any job. That is the number one thing you should, you should tell yourself. I, I will be there to do any job. Either working with it, if you can do it in the nursing home, if you can look after our kids, even if it's not your passion, say to yourself, I'm going to do anything to survive. That is the number one, number one. Am I going to tell someone in Zambia, oh, come with a lot of money? That's, that's not realistic. We know it's, it's not easy. But at least if you can afford to prepare rental money for two months, at least just two months or even one month. Yeah. Uh, don't come like me. I uh, came with, uh, with no money. Uh, I, I, I remember I came with a very small, a uh, very small suitcase because we left all our stuff. Oh, we are going to get new stuff when we mm -hmm. go to, yep. Yep. <laughs> go to, to, to America. Come, yeah. come, come, come prepared. Yeah. Okay? Come prepared. At least you can survive for the first one, one month. If you can make it for three months, uh, you, you can get ready. Um, depending on where you are, if it is Delaware, or let's say Texas. Texas is very cheap. Um, 800 rent will, will usually cut it for you. Yeah. In New York, in New York, I don't know. I Ooh, think even no. In, no. Uh, yeah, even in Delaware, about a thousand ten years ago, uh, in, in rentals, uh, rental we will, we will cut it for, for you. So if you can come ready three months in advance, yeah. And we had no information as to anyone telling us, okay, where you are going, it can be tough, okay? Don't just prepare your, your air ticket. You look after the, the, uh, uh, the half a small budget mm -hmm. for money to look, after, to, look, to look after it. That would be very, very, very critical for anyone, anyone who, 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 who wants to come. Otherwise, if you don't have that, um, I don't know about now, my days when we came, 1998, jobs were there. Uh, with or without social security number, jobs, jobs, were there, jobs were there. Now things, immigration are getting a little bit tight. I, I'm not sure. But I think New York will always be New York. There will be a job for, for anybody. But yeah, any other places, uh, I, 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 I think, I don't, I don't know, but you need to, to, pre to prepare a little bit more. So come with extra money if you are coming here. Yeah, no, I think that's really good advice. Coming with extra money, don't come like me. I came with $200, which I got lucky that I got a job before I ran out of, um, of money. But um, New York, the experience with New York when it comes to jobs, men and women experience it differently. It's easier, I think, in my opinion, for women to get jobs because we're able to do anything like housekeeping and babysitting is like number mm. one of what we can do with or with papers. Or if you're here, while you're waiting for your papers to come through, you can do those type of jobs. For men, um, it's very hard. I see a lot of people... Um, do dishwashing depending on uh, uh, in the restaurants so yeah. if you if you're not um you, you can't be too full of yourself when you come no. i think you have to be very down yeah. to earth to be able yeah. like mr charlie said 
to open your mind up to do anything. If somebody wants to cut their grass, uh, for you to cut their grass, do that. Right. It's just going to pay your bills in the meantime. It takes long to make it. Unless you're coming like yeah. diplomats, ambassadors, then that's a different story. Right. And they, everything is prepared for them uh, when they come compared to if you're just coming blindly. Um, how about people who have great jobs, let's say, in their country? They have good jobs in their country. What advice would you give them? Because I've had, uh, in our community especially, uh, as Zambians, I've had people, and not even our, our community Zambians, outside, just talking to people who are fellow immigrants. I used to work very close to the UN in the city, so I would meet almost the whole world in one day sometimes. And... Um, some of them would be complaining about how it is here. I wish I knew um, how it is in America. I wouldn't have left my job. And they would have been further up in their careers in their country had they not left those jobs. Um, so what advice would you give somebody with a great job, uh, leaving their job, maybe coming here? That, 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 that is uh, probably a, a, a tough one. Um, and I'm sure it goes circumstance by circumstance. Yes. Meaning, if you have a great job in 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 Zambia, um, question is some sometimes is uh, what what does it mean? Meaning, are you able to send your children to the school of uh, of your choice? Because yeah. these are some of the decisions which make. Uh, 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 people uh, to migrate. Yes. Uh, 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 my job is great. Uh, do I have access to good medical medical help? Mm. Yeah. So if those you can tick those, and they are, they are there in Zambia, I'm sure. Uh, are people who have uh, uh, good good jobs who, who haven't come here. But I wouldn't say to someone who has a good job and they have intentions of coming here, um, their reasons might be not necessarily just financial. Uh, maybe they want to up their education. So they'll make, they make, uh, they make that move. And most of the people, it, it is like, uh, like that. Uh, but then what happens is when they come here, I, I, I've heard of people uh, maybe from Asians, even, even Africans who are engineers from Zambia or mm -hmm. a doctor from Zambia. Yes. But because they can't pass an exam mm -hmm. over here, they end up sorry to say working, yeah, working in McDonald's. Yes. Now you are, you are going probably to, uh, to, to, to regret having come. However, the, the economies here are, are not meant like um, what personally I am, but it is the environment around you what makes uh, these economies. They've uh -huh. made them in such a way, if, if you really want, you have a small, small salary, but because of what they have, or how they have, they have made it, in no time, what you had back home and what you can do back home, uh, back here, or almost almost be far. I'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story. Our friends, the, the Kenyans, um, when, when when they come here, most yeah. of them they say they don't want to work for anybody after after, after they, they 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 live here for uh, say a year or, or or two years. Yes. So this guy uh, in Delaware introduced me to flipping houses. He was a Kenyan. Mm. You know, if you can be an entrepreneur in America, you can flip things around, you can mm -hmm. work things around. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you have a great job in Zambia. Yes, yes, you, you have a great job in Zambia. But if that mindset you can you can bring it here, you want to come here. I'm, well, I'm not saying leave your job and come here. Yeah. If you can and you are creative enough, I think it can compensate your, your, your coming. So circumstances, we don't know, are different. So you and I, Nancy, cannot tell anyone, give up your managerial job at the bank. And oh, no. <laughs> if you want to come, there is a lot of opportunities here. But like anyone else, 
expects to go through some turbulent, uh, turbulent uh, time. I think it's well said. Um, the, I, I like where you took it, where it's the, the balancing aspect of it. Uh, because you have more resources when you come here compared if you're coming Africa all of Africa is third world country really yeah. and yeah. when you come here I think it compensates for for that even if you yeah. are a big boss um and un unless you're checking off all the boxes of what it is uh your situation is like you were saying um I believe it's well said uh really and for yeah. anybody looking, make a checklist of whatever you, yeah. your checklist yeah. is, because yeah. um, it is amazing. Um, like my, the interview I had with my pastor, he actually also said that the business aspect of it, like when you come to America, I think having, going to school and having a business is the way to go. Um, you'll be more successful as a business owner and like working for somebody. Um, that, 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 that's, what, that's what the Kenyans uh, will tell you. I can't come from Kenya. I come here, start waiting for, for some, someone. But yeah. can, can everyone be an entrepreneur? Probably? No, of course probably. not. Oh, of course not. Yes. Yeah. But eventually, if you, that's, what your, that, that's what's in your plan, you can get there. Uh, you, can, you, you start by working for someone. And in order to be actually be a good business person, if you work for someone, you know how it is to run a business. And right. you'll be able to treat well your employees if you get to hire employees and have that big business that you want. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you are our um, our chairman for Co-op Zambia. I see <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How can yeah. our, uh, do we still have space for anybody to join? And if, if you say yes, how can they join uh, Co-op Zambia? So, what, what is a co-op Zambia? Co-op Zambia is mainly for the Zambians uh, who live in diaspora, uh, Zambian uh, friends of Zambia. Um, so we have a lot of, uh, uh, of friends. Um, part, part of the story, Nancy, you, mm -hmm. you talked about was how when you go to Mongu, there is nothing. And yet, we live in a rich country. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of minerals. Like somebody told me in Delaware, what's up with that? You have all these things, and then you're in a poor country. What's up with that? Yeah, That's what we are trying to answer at the Global Co-op Zambia. The Zambians in diaspora. If we came together, put our resources together, Mm. Can we maybe just claim a little bit of our God-given wealth, our minerals? I'm for can, that. We, can we help to reclaim back? Or are we also going to, to sit and just watch our minerals being taken in daytime and they are gone? And the little bit we aye, get aye. is what, what they pay the, the mind. Or yeah. like I told you, uh, if I found my concrete, concrete pastures. pasture, the information I'm able to gather when I go online, how much of my income, my, of my money, is paying a teacher in Switzerland $150,000 a year, a teacher in Aye. Switzerland. When my teacher back home can bear getting salary at the end of the year, at mm -hmm. the end of the month, Yep. But we have all these riches. So Co-op Zambia is an, in, I, maybe I should call it a movement, an emotional movement. We need to reclaim back what belongs to us. You, Nancy, cannot do it alone. I cannot do it alone. Yep. Imagine if 100,000 Zambians came together and put a thousand, just a thousand together. Yeah. How we can move mountains. So that is the story. The question was, do you have room? If we can find 100,000 Zambians, we will change the landscape of Zambia. We will change the landscape. So the room is there. Go to www.globalcoopzambia. I didn't, I didn't know Nancy was. She, she has ambushed me with this question. Uh, <laughs> 
Global Listen, I'm passionate core. about the core. Yeah. I'm proud Global. of it. And I love yes. what, what the mission is about. Yes. And um, I, I follow I follow um, Global Co-op on yeah. uh, Instagram. And yes. while you're there, please follow me as well on Concrete Pastures. Yeah, yeah. GlobalCoopZambia.com. Um, become a, a member. We uh, Nancy, when she, she posted this video, uh, you're going I'll have to the link. The, yeah. Our, our Telegram group as well. There, people can join. Yes. Uh, the response since the launch, uh, Nancy has been overwhelming. We are telling a story of about, uh, uh, we were planning to, to, to invest in, in, in bond. Uh, maybe we begin with $10,000. Uh, mm -hmm. And then someone in the community said, no, we can go 20,000. And everybody said, oh no, that's too much. Now just the pledges, people saying that they are ready to put in the money. We are coming to cross to $200,000. Oh. 200,000, yes. No, that's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. It's a great yes. mission. We yes. have to give back to our country. And yes. 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 We, we have a lot of resources. We have a lot of talent everywhere in the world. And there's a lot of people who, most of the people that I talk to, they want to mm. go back home one day. Correct. Correct. Contribute in a way that they can. And why not start from here? Before you leave, Correct. have something. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, that, that's, that's a good point. That's a good yeah. Point. yeah. Yeah, like before while you leave. while you are here, yeah. make your own your own Canada. Uh, go and find it there. You have everything, medical schools and everything. While you're That's in the sure. United States, do whatever you can do to make it the way you want. Yeah, I like yes, that. no, for sure, for sure. And um, the, I I just appreciate the community. With uh, I was so impressed with the meetings that. Uh, you actually bring the speakers from Zambia, like the Zambian bank, uh, when you brought the speakers. Governor. Yeah. The, governor, but, uh, the governors, the mm governors, -hmm. and also the, um, when we were talking about bonds and investing and Correct. all of that. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was amazing. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's really, like it's a teachable moment because sometimes we forget what we have in our country and when they come Correct. to give us financial literacy of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I like, mean, on, on that point, uh, Nancy, uh, those guys, if you remember what they were talking about, our own bonds are mostly traded by foreigners. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I in, in, enough, I've got enough here in, in Canada. You have a little bit enough. Mm -hmm. We can all buy at least 1,000 um, 1, kwacha for one bond. Yeah. Is equivalent is equivalent to let's say fifty dollars. Yeah, about. every one of us can buy a bond. Meaning we all can buy a bond. Yeah, I'm on a mission. All the mining stocks in Zambia, I'm buying. Do you know how much a stock is uh, uh, for uh, uh, a first quantum mi minerals in Zambia? Twelve kwacha, which is yeah. I think. Is it five cents, something like that? Yeah, wow, yeah, it's almost. This is the mission. Cent. Whoever is yeah. going to listen to this show, send Nancy a note. I will yeah. send you the email address. Who to yeah. to. Let's buy, buy, buy in back, bit by bit. Let's reclaim what belongs to us. Yeah. Like, like you said, some of us, this is a very emotional, emotional thing. Yes. We see the, there's so much wealth we have and there's so much wealth, uh, so much suffering. It does not make sense. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, definitely, definitely for sure. This has been a very inspiring conversation. I am so grateful you were able to join me. I know you're super busy. We've been trying to do this for a while. I am so glad we're able to inspire people out there. And um, for anybody, uh, we all have our own challenges that we face. Mm -hmm. And we all have our own triumphs that we face when we go to these different countries anywhere in the world. and. Our goal here is just to share our stories, to inspire you, to give you some insight on what it's like to be an immigrant anywhere in the world. And you've heard Mr. Charlie share his own, and he's had some triumphs, which he was happy to share with us, which we celebrated. And thank God he was blessed enough to find some support, some people uh, that helped him along the way through his journey with his family and uh, some challenges. <laughs> and we all a face different ones yeah. yes a, a, a yeah. lot of them but they all contribute to the success 
of who we are today, uh, mm -hmm. no matter what we face. And just don't let the challenges break you because there will be challenges. There's no oh, doubt about that. There, yeah. There's no running away from it. There will be challenges. <laughs> and uh, unless you just reach, I don't know, you, yeah. you reach, yeah. you're coming from, uh, let's say, uh, Dubai and coming over here, you already have <laughs> everything yeah. set up let's say in manhattan <laughs> then it's different but if you yeah. come in like us uh from uh, a developing country wherever you are in the world there will be a lot of challenges and i hope you could take away something from our conversation uh please feel free to reach out to uh, mr charlie to me and last one i normally leave a quote for yeah. my audience and yeah. uh i don't know what you live by uh, i'm i'm inspired by nelson mandela i'm inspired by so many people yeah and <laughs> um do you have any a quote that you live by an inspiration something that inspired that has inspired you throughout your life yeah so usually um uh, business uh, is really uh so of, of late, I've just started listening to a lot of uh, uh, Jewish, um, why Jewish are so successful? I ask the question. So I, li I listen to a lot of podcasts uh, mm. by the Jews and the, how they, uh, they, 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 they make their, their money. This is not a, a quote, anyway. No, no, no. But, uh, Anything that uh, inspires uh, you. Yeah, listen, yeah, I'm, I'm, according to, according I'm to the Jews, yeah, according to the Jews, now see, uh, they say, when we start investing, this rabbi was saying, we don't invest for our children. We invest for our grandkids. Mm. My, my, my children, their granddad should have invested for them. Huh. Wow. So if, if you ever wonder why Jews are successful, we pass on wealth. And we don't even try to pass on words to this one. No, this, this my child has already, it was already covered. The gap now is they Over even flowing. they are born. Yes, they are grandchildren. Hmm. That is how, how long term view they, they, they look at their, their investment. While you and I, we jump down, we want our investment in six months, it should start reaping. I'm, 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 I'm already at the beach. I, I did my returns. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So when, when, when we begin to, to, to invest, let's detach it away from us. Maybe when we think it in terms of our grandkids mm. who have a, a bigger, a, 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 a better view of, uh, of investing. I found a quote today which I like. You have to look after, after wealth. Uh, this court says, uh, Nancy, you have to look after wealth, but knowledge will look after you. Oh, I love that. And that's what I think our, um, this is what our conversation has been about. It's been about knowledge and everything that we've, we learned through the, the journey that we go through as yeah. immigrants yeah. and what we can take back home, what we can give to our kids. And I even love what the Jewish uh, community does. Yeah. Uh, their wealth is for their grandkids. I mean, it reminds me of, um, I think I heard a pastor one time saying, you know, your grandmother's prayers are being answered through you. And right now I kind of feel that way that my grandmother's prayers uh, have been answered yes. because of yes. my humble beginnings of how yes. I started and yes. sleeping on the floor with my my grandmother's house yes. and being here it's impossible like yeah. the uh, I'm humbled to be yeah. honest yeah and wow no Jewish community I mean I always admire them to be honest with you uh, yeah. we have a Jewish community here the way they are carry their community the way they carry each other is very very different from how i see our community when i first came here i um i used to hang around with uh, my zambian community it is sad to say <laughs> I, i'm gonna be honest we yeah. have a lot of jealousy around each other of what we're doing and w people are even afraid to share what they are doing because somebody mm. else might copy or might be jealous about it correct 
but with their community, when I was working in their community, I saw the togetherness, if it is even a word. <laughs> I saw how they were so together. Um, if, it, it's beyond what I've ever experienced. What, 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 what they say, Nancy, is that um, uh, before the wealth goes away from the Jewish community, we have to make sure we have done all everything under the sun we search yes there's no one who can who can uh, 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 offer this service before mm. we take the money out of the jewish community yeah we need to do that as africans as zambians and wherever you are in the world we need to do that for each other yeah. and um i'm so 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 grateful that you sh you inspired me you inspired the community and oh my god like i said i can talk to you for <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Forever. I, I, I can. Because I, I mean, this is a great conversation and we, we don't talk about certain things a, a lot, which right. need to be addressed. And yeah. a lot of people need to hear certain things. And uh, even for me, some of the things that you spoke about, they, are, they were eye opening. I'm like, oh, wow. And I hope they were eye opening to everybody that's listening to us today. So, Mr. Charlie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, it was a, a good uh, conversation. Very inspiring, as we do ourselves. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.